All right, YouTube, Repo Man 64. Behind me is Ken Potter and Steve Fletcher. And I contacted uh, Ken yesterday and asked him. He did this awesome video, uh, I think it was last year or the year before. He explains it in this. Please go watch it. Um, where he had the blood moons go boom, boom. And they all culminated to May 16th of 2022. So I guess it was two years ago. And uh, I asked him, can you do the same thing? Now, the 11th is not on my timeline. And that's kind of cool because that would mean that it's literally not on anyone's timeline. It's literally a complete day all by itself that nobody's been watching for so i'm going to get into the pictures and i'm going to talk a little bit about this and uh january the 11th like why but you know everybody's seeing the 11 11 i want to encourage everyone you all have a gift i firmly believe that everyone has a gift and um some of you see cloud formations, numbers, uh, you have the most amazing dreams. Um, never be jealous of anyone else's gift. Never discount anyone else's gift. We're all part of the body and each one of us has a different thing to contribute to this. And when you get to heaven, um, you will see that uh, you in fact had an amazing gift and, and you'll work with that gift, I believe, through the millennium and it's it's going to be something else uh, during that period of time. It's The rapture is about to happen. It is going to happen very soon. Um, when exactly, we still don't know. I haven't had an angel visit me at the foot of my bed and tell me, but we're still watching. So let me get into the pictures here and see. Hopefully this is recording my voice. I don't have my earpieces in. Start off with this. Um, this is a good thing for you to take a picture of and leave behind or send to somebody um, that is on the fence about any of this. Remember, I like I keep like I want to keep enforcing this uh, before we get angry with each other or or be upset with one another over our gift and our different uh, uh, ways of looking at things, I uh, want to remind you that there are 8 billion people on this planet that have zero interest in any of this. Nobody's watching. The channels that we have are relatively small. Some I've seen up into two to 300,000, mine's in around 20 and growing, but these this isn't enough if you're looking at 8 billion people. So what's about to happen is a rapture is about to occur. And of those 8 billion people, there will be a great multitude that no man can count that will be driven to their knees because they're going to see this event and they're going to know what happened because you took a picture of this and sent it to them and they'll have it in their phone. You told them, if you see me go. And to me, that is one of the most important things that you can do right now is not to change it. I'm, you're not supposed to get them to kneel in front of you and put your hand on their head and say, do you accept Jesus? No, that's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to warn them of this impending period of time of seven years and prepare them for it as best you can. And of course, what is our greatest preparation? And that is Jesus Christ uh, being on their minds that they kneel down to him on their own uh, during that seven years. So let's get into the pictures here. This is why I say no other book should be in the Bible. The Bible is complete. Nothing else is lacking. Not one jot, not one tittle. I showed you that. The day equalized is the first day of the year. I showed you that March 16th is always the day of uh, that is equalized. This is where everybody's going crazy right now. And I was sent this. They sent this to me. And of course, what's the first thing I do is I go to my timeline and it's nothing. It, it, there's lit, it means nothing. But the more I check in on this, the more I look at this and I look at the symmetrics of this, I say, that's, that's too incredible to ignore. However, 
Calendars are my strong point. Timeline is my strong point. Where everything lands, which I believe is 100% accurate. It's, it's to the best of my ability to do that math. But if I have a question about symmetry and distances back and forth and is it a real thing that these people are talking about because it doesn't january 11th doesn't really show up to anything for me i go to ken potter because ken potter has a brilliant mind and he is able to work this type of stuff out i think he was an engineer perhaps i'm sorry ken i don't recall he has all kinds of stuff on the wall behind him i've got a tv on the wall behind me so <laughs> ken potter's got all the uh the uh, diplomas and everything of, uh, of his accomplishments through life, and that's fantastic. So when I have an issue like this, I see something like this pop up. I go to him to say, hey, is this valid? It was valid enough for him to text me back and say, hey, Steve has a bunch of stuff, and you all know Steve Fletcher. Uh, he also has a bunch of stuff. I'm going to go make a video with him, and we're going to combine our stuff together, and that's what they did in this video back here. And... Uh, go watch it so i go to ken he confirms that this is not a big nothing burger that this means something and that january the 11th culminates to the center point of all of these blood moons that are showing up which i find to be very telling and of course it doesn't land on dr barry oz feast days it doesn't land on my timeline it doesn't land um on cool cats uh 924 it lands on a random day that kind of everybody including just everybody who sees numbers are all seeing 11, 11 i've even seen it several times i showed you here we have 111 and i'm just like all right there might be something to this So I also see on Facebook that from the Revelation 12 sign, which is the night of September to the 23rd, the first day being September the 24th, 2,300 days, and you'll find this in the Bible, lands on January the 11th. Now I've, it's got my interest. I've had several people tell me about this, and I'm like, eh, it's not on the timeline. I, I, I'm not sure about it, but then when I start doing this and it starts lining up with January 11th, it kind of blows my mind. And we all know all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose for whom he did foreknow. Oh, this is the, this is, this has been going around again. I thought I'd seen the last of this predestination versus free will. It's the same thing. If you're God, which you are not, you see all things. You already know. So you ask yourself, God, why would you create somebody that you know is going to go to hell? There was always the possibility of them accepting the sacrifice that Jesus made for their sins. There was always that possibility. So... That's free will. Nobody's going to get to heaven and say, well, I was chosen and they weren't. That's, that's not how it works. There is free will involved in this. And there are many verses to support the fact that you have free will. Moreover, whom he predestinated them, he also called. And whom he justified them, he also glorified Who will have all men to be saved? He would. He would have all men saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth for there is one God and one mediator between God and man the man Jesus Christ who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time so accepting and understanding who Jesus is what he did and accepting the free gift look the Galilean wedding this this and and I'll tell you this is Real simple if you're saved to understand. Um, and I'm not even going to say those who don't understand aren't saved. I don't want to say that either because I don't know. I can't make that judgment call. But in the Galilean wedding, the man prepares everything. He 
puts on the entire show. He gets the cup. He fills the cup. He walks up to the bride with the cup. And he hands it to the bride. At that very moment, it's all predestined. It's all done. Everything's finished. At that very moment, she can either not take that cup and drink from it, or she will. And who knows how often uh, she would deny that cup. But if you... If you get to hell, you're not going to say, well, God didn't choose me. That's why I'm here. You're going to say, that cup was offered to me, and I turned it down. That's what you're going to say. There will be no people in hell going, man, I wish God would have chose me like he chose that person over there. This just isn't fair. God is fair. So there is no such thing as God created somebody to go to hell. He did not. He created everyone. He wills that everyone would accept Jesus, but, and yet, and everyone's hearing about him, and yet there are those who won't. So hopefully that clears up a little bit of this predestination thing that's going around. It's predestined that you will be called. Will you take that cup and drink it? Who knows? And the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He wants all of people to come to repentance. He didn't make Joe Schmo to go to hell. He didn't do that. Joe Schmo made his decision. He did not take that cup. It's that simple. It's that simple. If it was designed the way... Um, they're saying that that God created people to go to hell. What was the point of Jesus going to the cross? Why in the world did that have to happen? Why did he have to pay for sin if it was already determined that their sins would be covered? What was the point? And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. How often I would have gathered thy children together even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wing, and ye would not. You made the choice not to follow. You made that choice. You did not take that cup. You did not drink it. It was offered to you. It was offered to everyone. You decided not to. Once, and, 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 and here's the problem, is you're trying to get into the mind of God, who is all-knowing. <laughs> He's all-knowing. So, he... It, 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 and we can't do it. We just can't do it. Our brains, our finite minds cannot come to the understanding of God. He still had to offer somebody who would deny him. He still had to. There still had to be people that would deny. It, it's not as simple as saying, well, then he should have never created them. There would be no one to deny him then. There has to be deniers. If any man will do his will... Just believe on Jesus. It's that simple. It's that simple. Anyone can be saved. His will is that you should know Jesus. That's it. It's that simple. See, I have set before thee this day life and good. This is Deuteronomy 30, 15. I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. You have a choice in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God and to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments. Now, this is the law. Once you have Jesus, Jesus has covered the law on your behalf that thou mayest live and multiply and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, and people are using this to say you can lose your salvation. No, this is pre-salvation. This comes in pre-salvation right here. Um, you can turn your heart away from that cup. You are not saved until you take that cup and drink it. Once you take that cup and drink it, you're saved forever, all eternity. That's it. It's done. You can't spit the water back out. Or vomited by God, whatever you want to call it. You can't undo it. Once you get that blood on you, it doesn't come off. This is where everyone gets confused. This passage they use for loss of salvation. There is no such thing as loss of salvation. So there's a finite line. The path 
is very narrow. It is extremely narrow. And if you go to one side, you say, God created people to be destroyed in hell. If you go to the other side, you say, God saved everybody. There is nobody. If you go to yet another path, you say, well, you can get saved, but then you can lose it. And no, you cannot. So it's a finite line that we walk. And, and it's a finite line that we understand. And then on top of all that, we're dealing with God, who is infinite, not finite. He's infinite. We are finite. So we don't fully see the big picture of how all this transpired. We don't understand it all. However, that's how it works. So, but if thine heart turn away, so thou wilt not hear, but thou shalt be drawn away and worship of the gods and serve them. I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land. You will get that cup offered to you. You will be the one to deny it. So when you wind up in the lake of fire because you denied that cup, you will never say, oh, God saved them and didn't save me. you got to look at all aspects of this from all sides and, and, and understand what you're looking at. You can, you can go down and put God in a box and say, yep, God just, you know, save these people and not these. That, that's just terrible. That is not what happened. God offered the cup. They turned it away. They had free will to turn away that cup. We all do. Some of us drank of it. Some of us haven't yet. Some of us never will. Let's see. And ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whether thou passest over the Jordan or to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, that cup, blessed blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. You choose life that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, that thou mayest obey his voice, that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto the fa- uh, thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give to them. The timeline. Okay. Come on, timeline, don't do that. Okay, here we go. Where are we at? We are down here. January 1st was Tevet 17. And of course, you're going to hear all kinds of different dates for different things, and that's fine. Uh, the day of equal parts never changes. That's where we start the year. Here we are coming up. Now, January 13th will be Tevet 30. It'll be the last day of um, the uh, the month. The first day of the month, the Rosh Chodesh will be Savat 1, January 14th. But January the 11th happens two days earlier. So it wasn't on my timeline. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't make sense. More sense would make, uh, would make to me if it were January the 24th, which is Shavat 11, which is 11-11. All these people in these clocks and these dreams and everything, that would have made more sense to me on January the 24th, but this is January the 11th. So it took me a minute to take a look at this. I did this again, the 2300 days from September the 24th to January the 11th. I've showed you this before. Something must happen. This is six years, six months, and six days from the Revelation 12 sign until the day Jesus goes to the cross. His anniversary is always on March the 30th. On March the 30th will be exactly six years, six months, and six days. I think that the Antichrist is going to set something up on this day again to steal a day from that, that most auspicious day that Jesus went to the cross for us, and he's going to do something terrible on that day. Something bad, I think, will happen on Passover on March 30th. All right. I went ahead and did um, three years and six months or 42 months after the cross um, on March 30th. And uh, this is when uh, the Antichrist is supposed to go in to the temple to proclaim himself to be God. And of course, I was floored. I had no idea that from the cross, 
42 months exactly to the day, September the 29th, is Jesus' birthday. That's the day Jesus was born. He was conceived on December the 25th. 40 weeks later, he was born on September the 29th at nightfall, becoming September the 30th. I was floored by this. This is, a, this is a... This is where the Antichrist is going to go in. We're starting to see the dates line up because of the Revelation 12 sign. They're starting to fall into place. Let's see. This is from my Discord. This is Mondo. He said, this is an interesting passage from the secret book of James. These are extra biblical. They don't belong in the Bible. Uh, History books you could look at them as are also known as the Apocryphon of James. And uh, it says that Jesus appeared to the disciples 550 days after he rose from the dead while they were watching for him. And I thought, hmm, that's incredible, 550 days. I didn't know anything about this. Um, He just sent this to me. And uh, it says, Jesus addresses Peter and James. Now the 12 students were all sitting together recalling what the Savior had said to each of them, whether in a hidden or an open matter, and organizing it in books. I was writing what is in my book. Look, the Savior appeared after he had left us while we were watching for him. They were watching back then. This history book here says they were laid back 550 days after Jesus ascended, or after Jesus went to the cross, And they were laid back. They were kind of thinking that that might be the date, right? They were laid back watching 550 days later. And uh, after he rose from the dead, we said to him, Did you depart and leave us? Jesus said, No, I shall return to the place from which I came. If you want to come with me, come. So Zod makes a comment here as well. I thought that was pretty cool. So I did the math. And 550 days after the cross, and you can use any year because the days never change on my timeline. March 30th of 2023, um, when you add 550 days, you land on September 30th, Jesus' birthday. So from the cross to his birthday, again, cross to birthday. If we find a, a history piece of history naming 550 days, and you go and do the math, and boom. No moons involved, because if you use the moon, this can't happen. If you use the sun, this can't happen. But 550 days after March the 30th, when Jesus actually went to the cross, um, to the day he was actually born, September the 30th, is 550 days. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I'm still seeing 11-11. I wonder if it's supposed to be 1-11 and it's January the 11th we're supposed to see. (laughs) Or maybe it happens at 11-11 on January the 11th. Wouldn't that be something? Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, oh, I wanted, this is, this is a part of that other thing. It said, who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. This is after they came down, Moses comes down, finds the golden calf, and he tells everybody, all right, make a choice right now. Who, like, just think about this for a second. Who? in their right mind, would have chosen not to follow God. They just, they watched the, 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 the Reed Sea separate. They watched a pillar. Uh, they followed a pillar of smoke by day and a pillar of fire by night, and they ate manna. I mean, they did all this stuff, right? And they still chose to follow Satan and not God. And what happened to them? They were They were killed, so... But they had a choice. That cup was offered to them. They still had a choice. There's The Bible shows so many choices. This is what Ken Potter and Steve Fletcher are talking about. Um, Steve Fletcher's been talking about this for, uh, I think, a day or two now. And we got it from this guy right here, Daniel Taylor. As far as I know, Daniel Taylor is the one that has found this. Um, he calls it a double confirmation, Psalms 19.1. The heavens declare the glory of God. Not only do the blood moon tetrads point directly to January the 11th, 2024, so do all of the eclipses with the same symmetrical alignments. 
Genesis 1.14, God made lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day and the night and let them be for signs. Luke 21.25, there shall be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. He says, I'm not declaring a date, which, of course, everyone's fearful of because nobody's gotten that visit from an angel at the foot of their bed. There is some people, a lot of people who've had dreams that it will happen on a Thursday, which I was like, Thursday? What a weird day, right? But they had these dreams. You know, that little girl that had a dream, she met Jesus, and then she was a painter, and she painted him. And, you know, I mean, is that what Jesus looks like, or is that what he looks like to her, you know? So thank you, Daniel Taylor. If if you were the one that found this, I appreciate that. I've gotten this out to as many people as I can. Um, If Ken Potter's impressed, then I'm impressed. Again, doesn't land on my timeline. I wasn't even going to delve into this until I saw this, and I asked Ken Potter, I said, can you make a, a thing like you did before where they just jump up, boom, 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 and then they culminate to January the 11th. I don't know if that's something he's working on. Uh, like he did in 2022. That was incredible. But they got this out quick. And uh, it is, if it impressed him, then I'm impressed. All right, the Rapture Zone, Steve Fletcher. Oh, that's just, this is just me uh, noticing that they're going to talk about this. So uh, go watch the video. It's pretty incredible. Like I showed you, there are other things that are you know, lining up to January the 11th. Um, Could this be it? I don't know. I thought it was going to be it for a long time. I put off doing so many things that I probably should have done because I thought this was it. So here we are. And in 2024, who thought that was going to happen? Who who thought that was going to happen? But here we are. Here we are. We're just still waiting, waiting. So... Repo Man 64, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Um, like it so that the algorithm increases and it gets out there to more people. Um, go watch. Um, it's, I, uh, Ken Potter changed his YouTube. It's called. It is called the Rapture Zone. I think it's called the Rapture Zone now. Let me go look. I don't want to. He changed it to I think the Rapture Zone. Uh, let's see here. Isaiah 53. I love his stuff. He called me up the other day. I think he's in the United Kingdom right now. Called me up and said, you got to make another screaming video. I love his videos. Awesome. All right. Let's see here. What do we got? Let me see my history. Where's my history? Here. All right, Steve Fletcher, Ty Green, the Rapture Zone. Yeah, it's called the Rapture Zone, and uh, he uh, was looking into that. Watch him on the wall. Looking up is a she does. A, she has a YouTube and she has a Facebook, and she actually puts all of us, all of our dates on a, a timeline and and uh, puts them out there. This is you got to watch this one with Isaiah fifty three. Jesus is coming. Um, Cataclysm, Tony Early. Watch Train. Let's see here. CBS News. Blue Heaven. Um, Gigi. I love her stuff. Uh, Aaron does a lot of good stuff. He's he's He does this numerical stuff, too. I'd be curious. I haven't... Uh, I need to go watch this because I'm not sure if he's on to this January 11th thing yet or not. New News. He's just straight into the news. He's lining uh, news up with uh, biblical events. It's really cool. And so does uh, Watchman River. He does... Uh, Really cool job. Global Rapture Watchers. He's also the same way uh, lining up news events with uh, with uh, the Bible itself and showing how close we are. God's Land Down Under. He's awesome. I love his channel. So um, just uh, subscribe to those channels. I, need, I, I want more hair. Can I have more hair in heaven? This is ridiculous. Of course, I'm almost 60, so I made it this far. Did pretty good. That's the well pump, and it's really loud. And it's done when it reaches 50 pounds. 55 pounds. 57 pounds. 58 pounds. (laughs) I guess it's never going to be done. 
anyway uh repo man 64 um we'll chat with you again later from outside in the shed i got my tv hooked up so i'm pretty proud of that and uh see how this works you guys hear that Oops, I did that wrong. I never know what button to hit. Yeah, I don't know what button to hit. So. And who knows what's gonna jump up on TV when you're not want, when you're not uh, on it, so. All right, RepoMan64, like, comment, share, subscribe. Go to a quiet place by yourself. We're running out of time. We're been running out of time. But in 6,000 years, you know, uh, the months that we've been watching is a drop in the bucket. So, and uh, accept the Lord into your heart. Just kneel down, talk to your friend. He created you. He does not want to send you to hell. He does not want that. That's not what he wants. He, he's offering you a cup, and it's just as simple as taking it, drinking out of it. It's literally that simple. Everyone complicates this. Or oversimplifies it and it's simple just take the cup and drink from it accept it that's it all right repo man 64 we'll chat with you again later